Hello everyone and welcome to this quick tip from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today I want to give you a quick run through on how to use the poke tool. The poke tool is a pretty simple little tool that we've got in Blender that basically allows us to insert a vertex into the center of any selected face. This is pretty simple. Uh, it's not something that you're going to use very often, but when you do need it, it's pretty sweet. So just to give you a couple examples here, let's first look at how the tool works. So using just a default plane here, if we just hop right into edit mode, select our face, perhaps from vertex mode or whatever, doesn't really matter, and we just type in the space bar poke, you'll see we've got poke faces. The hotkey is also alt P. So if we just hit enter, you'll see exactly what's happened. It's inserted a vertex right at the center point of the face and then triangulated the entire face. So basically we've just divided the face into four triangles. So this doesn't seem inherently all that useful unless you have a very specific use case, but there's some things that you can do with it that are pretty great. So for one, if we bring up the operator panel by pressing F6, we can see that we've got our poke offset, offset relative, and then the poke center. So if we choose the offset, we can go ahead and out offset that vertex up or down any way that we want. So this could be used for anything from making spikes to making little divots to you name it. Uh, if we adjust, say, the offset relative, then it will rel do the offset relative to the surrounding geometry. We can adjust the center based on bounds, the mean, or the weighted mean. Now, in this case, with a perfectly square face, this won't really affect anything. And admittedly, I can't really describe exactly what this does, but it's there if you need it. So, this is fairly basic. You know, here we have, we've done it on a plane. Basically, we've quickly converted our plane into a pyramid. That's all fine and dandy. Some things that this is very handy for, though, is imagine if you need to make any kind of extrusion on the surface that you then want to round off. Well, you could then simply select this vertex and hit Control shift b to bring up your vertex bevel and something like this. Or then you could actually go ahead and round that off. Uh, any number of things that you could do. But let's hop out of edit mode real quick and let's look at another example. Let's look at, say, an icosphere. So an icosphere we can use for all kinds of things, particularly if you're doing any kind of like geometric structure, you know, a geodesic dome or anything like that, it's pretty useful. So if you wanted to say, do insets in each one of these faces, there's a variety of ways you could do that. You could use the actual inset tool, uh, which you would then have to confirm, then bring up the operator panel and choose inset individual. And you could do something like that. Or using the poke tool with alt P, we could first go in and we can create a spike ball, which is always fun. Uh, but we could also go ahead and take that negative, take it down like this, and suddenly you're, you're creating this kind of geometric structure that you could use for any kinds of things. You notice that we're, we're getting star shapes in here. So that in itself is pretty interesting. But again, none of these are really practical demonstrations of how you would use this. You know, this is a pretty particular case that only if you really wanted this shape would this be super valuable. You know, sure, you could take it a bit further, and since this was an icosphere, we can now select all of these interior vertices by selecting one, pressing Shift G to select similar, and then select similar based on the amount of connecting edges, at which point you could either bevel that and, you know, create something like that, similar to what our original inset did, you name it. Kind of do whatever you want with it. So it, it provides some kind of cool opportunities. Let's look at another example. So this is again a fairly specific use case or kind of a generic use case, I suppose, but it has a little bit more scope to it. So here I just have a simple disc. And you know, if you wanted to create a gear or uh, any kind of, you know, maybe you wanna create a, a shuriken, I don't know, you know, here's something you might do. So you might take all of your faces here by going into face mode. You might select this ring of faces and you might hit Alt P, create that, and this then gives you this kind of insetted shape here. You know, not quite a gear cog, but it sort of works. And you could adjust the, the offset here. So, you know, then you're, you're starting to get more of like, a, you know, it could be a geometric flower, it could be a spiked gear, it could be, once again, kind of whatever you might be using something like this for. But again, this is still kind of generic and doesn't really apply to a lot of real world scenarios. So let's look at one that really does. So you notice I've got my layer set up over here using the layer management add-on. 
I'm gonna go ahead and skip the simple vase because I wanna show you what I would actually use this tool for and where it's really fantastic. So if we just hop over to the crystal vase layer, you can see that I have something like this. So this is meant to be basically a crystal vase, uh, something you might see in a lot of antique stores. You know, you might see this kind of pattern on a decanter, on lots of different kind of glass vases and bottles. So this is not very difficult to make, but it's a little bit annoying if you don't do it with the poke tool. So just real quick, basically where I would use the poke tool is for doing this section. So to do that, let's take a look at the simple vase. So this is basically the exact same model, just without those little extrusions. And basically the way that you can do this is once your model is set up, uh, one thing, you know, in this case, what I want to watch for is basically make sure that my distribution and sizes of the faces are about equal. And then I can simply hop into object mode or edit mode, and I'll just select all of these face rings, just something like this. And I'll hit Alt P, go ahead and go right into the operator panel, and maybe I'll take this down to point, uh, let's see, point zero five, maybe, oh, that's maybe a little bit too little. So we'll take that up a little bit more, and that gives me that. And then since this is a sub D surface and I want these to be sharp, so, you know, this is an interesting example too because we have a, a very soft organic form in the vase that's also a very hard surface because it's cut glass. So if we just hit Shift E and 1, insert the creases to that, then we get that very crystalline structure very quickly. Now I may have made these a little bit wide, and you also notice that this is paired with a sub D modifier all the way up to level four, just to ensure that I get nice crisp lines on that, because otherwise it just looks kind of muddy, but it works pretty darn well. So that's kind of a real world scenario of how you would use it. Let's step back though, real quick, and see how we would have done that without the poke tool. Because really the poke tool is nothing more than kind of a variant of the inset tool. So using the inset tool, we could simply hit I, right click, hit F6 to bring up the operator panel. Oops, no, I and then left click, bring up the operator panel. We would need to be sure that individual is selected. So if it's not selected, it's not gonna work. So we choose individual. Then we can take the, the thickness all the way down, you know, something, something somewhere in there. And we could then set the depth to, you know, something about like this. And that's gonna start giving us what we want, but it's really not quite there. So the next thing we would do on the operator panel is we would go ahead and choose uh, or deselect select outer. So then it selects the inside. From here, we could then hit X and choose edge collapse. And that would collapse everything together. So that's fine and dandy. That does work. That gives us the exact same result. One thing you'll notice though is, first of all, we had to do that in two steps. We first had to do the inset. Then we had to do the edge collapse, and now we'll have to do actually one more thing, which is to go into vertex mode and, oh, well, I guess they're already selected, but ensure they're selected. So then you could just hit control plus to grow the selection, then hit shift E and one, and you would get the same result. So the poke tool is very, very similar to the inset tool. Basically, it's just combining two steps into one step for those scenarios where you want something very specific like that. Uh, works pretty darn well. Again, it's a pretty particular use case. You know, it's not gonna be a lot of times that you use it, but anytime you're doing something like this, it works pretty darn well.